All right, C. Lindelof videos, multiply and divide functions. We're talking about composite functions here. So we're going to start off with this let statement. It says, let f of x, let me make this little f so we don't think I'm saying something I'm not saying. Let f of x equal 4x to the 2 thirds, and let g of x equal 5x to the 1 half. And we're asked here, we're asked here to find, find f of x over g of x. So what we're saying here is that we're going to take these two functions and combine them to make a new function. So sometimes this is not said, especially when it's taught early, that we're trying to create a new function. So here we are creating a new function. The other thing that we probably want to know is what's the domain of this function? So we, we're going to go back at the end and find its domain. To find this function, it's actually really, really easy. So if you don't mind, what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to call this, uh, let me just show it to you visually. I'm just saying, let this be f of x, let this be f of x, let this be g of x, because it says that it is g of x, g of x, it's like a little map, frankly, and all we're saying is that we're going to start with this yellow line, the solidus, if you will, the fraction line, so this fraction line is this one, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go find f of x, and it says clearly that f of x is, f of x is 4x to the 2 thirds. So I have 4x to the 2 thirds power. So that was pretty easy. Next thing I'm going to do is as simple as the first thing, which is I'm going to go and I'm going to look for g of x. And it says clearly that g of x is 5x to the 1 half. So 5x to the 1 half. I would like this to be done. So I could, we could just say this. Okay, our new function, let's call it h of x if you don't mind. The new function that we just created is this one. However, I believe that your instructor, your professor, your teacher is going to want this to be simplified because we know some rules of exponents. And one thing we know is that x to the mth power over x to the nth power is equal to x to the m minus n power, right? So if you don't mind, what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate out my four-fifths because this is just times this, isn't it? So I'm going to take out the four-fifths. So there's our four-fifths times x to the two-thirds over x to the 1 half. Well, if you look at this model, this tells us what to do. We need to do 2 thirds minus 1 half. Okay, this sucks. Here we are in algebra, college algebra, intermediate algebra, wherever we are, and we're looking at this one. I'm not sure. This kind of sucks. So I'm going to go back to wherever we were when we learned this and say we need a common denominator. That common denominator in this case is 6, so I'm going to multiply this one by 2 over 2, which is just 1, and I'm going to multiply this one over by 3 over 3, which is just 1. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 3 is 6. So we can agree that 2 thirds is equivalent to 4 6. All I did is change what the fraction looked like, and that 1 times 3 is 3. 2 times 3 is 6, and I hope we can agree that 3 6 is the same as 1 half. Now what we're going to do is this. We're going to say that 4, 4, 6 minus 3, 6 is equal to 1, 6, isn't it? So look at this for a second. Now we have, we're going to keep our 4 fifths. So here's our 4 fifths that we started with. Don't freak out about this. This is what happened. I simplified this. I used this rule, and I did 2 thirds minus 1 half is equal to 1, 6. So we have x to the 1, 6 power. Hopefully you're cool with that, and even more than that, that we can say this is a rational exponent, and rational exponents can be shown as radicals, so sixth root. Also, we should know, because the domain means, think carefully about this, domain means what x values are possible, which ones work, which ones don't work. That is to say, can we take the sixth root of a negative number? Try that on your calculator, like maybe take the sixth root of negative 25. It doesn't exist because you cannot take an even root of a negative number. So we know that whatever number we put inside of here, whatever number goes here, has got to be greater than or equal to zero. So the domain, what x values are possible, are x such that x is greater than or equal to zero. Hopefully this helps you guys. Composite functions are a little bit of a pain but if you want to do calculus, they're going to become really, really important, especially as you explore things like, like the chain rule and the quotient rule, etc. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, let me know. And if you haven't already subscribed, please do. Thanks.